blackern79.com. I'm back here with another hand history, hand history review for you guys. Um, once again, uh, another hand here at NL25. I'm just looking at the table. This looks like it is a full ring table, but it's slightly shorthanded. we got seven people at the table. I'm always looking for why I'm at the table. It would probably be villain uh, 33 here, who's a, definitely a weaker player. Uh, just going over the, the HUD really quick. 31 is the number of hands. The 30 is the VPIP, percentage of hands that he plays, the zero is the preflop raise, and the four is the aggression factor. Uh, the other stuff, it's, uh, I'm only gonna go over, I'll, I'll point out the, the, the rest of the stuff if it's applicable to the hand here, but basically it's, you know, some preflop, three bet type stuff, and then postflop uh, kind of stats after that. So uh, let's get into the hand here. I have 8-4 suited the big monster on the button, and we'll see what happens in this spot. So it is the weaker player. Uh, once again, as I always talk about, look at stack size before anything else. Before you even look at your HUD, look at the stack size, uh, always. He's got $17.44, obviously one of those, uh, you know, bizarre kind of stacks that a uh, recreational player will show up with. Um, so that might influence the hand a little bit. So he does what he does best, which is limp, of course, on the cutoff. Uh, not a recommended play, <laughs> of course. And as you guys know, of course, we're going to be isolating basically with a huge ramp, probably about, you know, half the deck, uh, especially when I look at the, uh, uh, you know, I'll, I'll definitely take a look at the blinds in a situation like this, and, you know, if both of them are like three-bet monkeys, you know, I might um, tone it down a bit, and actually the guy to my left is kind of a three-bet, is kind of crazy a bit, a uh, three-bet of nine percent, uh, so it's, uh, you know, eight-four is definitely stretching it a bit here. I'd rather not have this guy on my left, but you know, whatever, it's, uh, it just kind of is what it is in this spot here. Uh, the, the big blind definitely is a much more, uh, you know, just a out and out net. He's only three betting at 3%. So, um, so they do, both the blinds do fold, which is great. So we just get our, uh, um, assuming the, the recreational player calls, which he does. And we, so we have position, uh, we have isolated, uh, against a bad player in position. So we do manage to flop, uh, middle pair, uh, he goes ahead and checks, and yeah, we're just always going to be uh, firing a C-bet here for value. Um, you know, mix it up against a reg in this spot for sure by checking from time to time and betting. Um, but against a player like this who is playing such a wide range and who is probably just going to call with, you know, uh, he's not going to get tricky basically. He's not going to bluff raise us or something like that. Um, hardly ever in a spot. It's just an easy kind of bet for value here. He does, in fact, call. And we catch the king on the turn. Um, normally this is a spot where probably against a reg I would slow down. Um, it, or I would actually use it as, as a card to bluff on it if I had nothing at all. But considering that I have some uh, showdown value, I might uh, slow down versus a reg. But once again, this is a different type of player. Um, I think that uh, a lot of people would check behind here, though, thinking that, um, you know, oh my god, we've only got third pair or something at this point, and not much of a kicker either uh, with the eight. But once again, you got to realize just how, how large this player's range is that he's going to call with, um, you know, players like this, all sorts of stuff. Players like this love to be in there with, with wheel gut shot draws, like an ace three, an ace five. You know, he's going to call with those kind of hands. Uh, if he's got a flush draw, some sort of other weird straight draw, like a 3-5 or maybe a 6-5 a for the gut shot. I mean, these are all, there's all tons of hands like this in his range that I think that uh, that he'll continue on with. Um, he might have caught a, picked up a gut shot here with a jack-10 or a jack-queen that he'll continue with. Um, so there's a lot of different stuff, uh, so I definitely think we should continue to, uh, to bet here for value. Um... And that's exactly what we do, betting about two-thirds pot, and he just folds. So um, that's a fine result as well. So um, I guess the the point of this hand is is basically uh, just, you know, for the most part, when bad players are, uh, are in that sort of just uh, check call, kind of playing the hand uh, in an extremely passive way, like basically not showing that they have anything that you should just continue value betting wide you know and uh and not not look at the situation like a reg like versus a reg it would be quite a bit different you know because we don't expect a reg to you know be calling the turn with ace five or ace three or something here whereas a player like this definitely will so 
Um, it's just kind of a, a little hand there to kind of uh, talk about value betting thin versus uh, the weaker players. So uh, let me know what you guys think of this hand below. Do you agree or disagree with the, uh, the bet on the turn, or is there a different way you would have played the hand? Uh, make sure you're subscribed to this channel if uh, you want to see more videos like this. Um, and also go check out my website, blackrain79.com, for weekly strategy articles on how to crush the micros. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. It's been Nathan Williams with blackrain79.com.